Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Nottingham Forest Career Mode. This is episode number 30 and it is a very late one. Yeah, my, my consistency over these last few weeks has kind of dipped downhill at this point and it's, it's just kind of not recovering really, is it? It's, it's going perfect in many ways and all of them are negative. Anyway, we are back, we are here. I'm going to try and get the consistency back on track. It's just, you know... Actually trying to focus on it, and it's just, well, yeah, it's just not going well, like I said. But anyway, we have got three games played, one game simmed, and all the good stuff of the Nottingham Forest goodness. And yeah, we're playing Southampton. They had an early start there with a shot. They actually play, were playing really well in this game, it has to be said. Well, and Ruther was being tested by them. They were getting numerous good shots out, and it, the, f the first half was basically all them. We didn't have a shot on target in the first half, and you can see here this kind of three-at-the-back formation almost falling apart at the seams, and then it gets whipped into Torre, who's got no one around him to protect him, and lo and behold, it's 1-0. In the 40th minute, it's a nice goal as well by Torre. I'll give him credit for that. But you could kind of see the attack, the, uh, the the defense, and the formation just falling apart at the seams there. In the replay now, as uh, we get distracted by David Ritchie's uh, crotch and Wellamuth's frustration, this is this is taking the piss. I'll be honest, but it, you know, it was just you'll see it here. Just look, there's just no kind of formation in the box. No one's really getting stuck to a player. They're all just kind of staying put. And, it, you know, it's kind of worrying about the defense when the furthest player back is none other than, um, you know, uh, Henry Lansby. But it's okay because we struck back with Wayne Rooney in the second half. Rooney getting his first goal for the club and then making the diamond symbol, getting ready to execute a diamond cutter onto one of the Southampton players. It's a nice pass. I believe it was by Osborne who passes it in there through the gap, leaves Rooney with not much work to do. And the finesse, the, not the finesse, well, the finish from Rooney that you'd expect is shown right there. Beautiful finish. And it is one all Game on once again. They get a free kick in the 70th minute. And that happens. I don't know why, but Southampton continue to be the kryptonite of this team. And here comes Papa Fake Jake. There he is, giving him a cuddle. Oh... The struggles going on, but yeah, I, I don't know what it is, but just this, just this save. Southampton just are our weakness. Home and away, we just seem to struggle against them all the time, and Wellenruta again lets in a disappointing goal. You see it here, you know, he, he he let in that first goal, which wasn't that good to be fair. Torre, you know, he Torre sh fin uh, finish was nice, but let's be honest, he could have done much better. And again, here he could have done much better. Watch this now. Miazga jumps, but he's not in the way of Wellenruther, who then should have been jumping way earlier and takes an extra two or so steps. And lo and behold, it gives that ball all the velocity it needs to go into the back of the net. That is not good. And we needed to bounce back. It's the 80th minute here. It's Ben Osborne. And it's off the post. Absolutely tragic moment. Ben Osborne have been playing incredible this game. Deserved the goal. But all he gets for is a hit off the post. And then the game ended. First loss of the season in just the, uh, the second week. 2-1 to Southampton. Very frustrating about it. And you could tell there. I believe that was Osborne who seemed incredibly frustrated about that loss. And after this, I decided that the... the the problems that Wellenruth causes, you know, all the um, struggles, you know, all that kind of stuff, all the easy goals he lets in, I just had enough of it, and I went for a substitute goalkeeper, you know, I went for Adam Lafont. I was, I was going to go for Scuffet, who, or Scuffet, however you pronounce his name, who was recommended in the comments, but his rating was too good at this point for me to bag him as a backup, but goalkeeper, thankfully, Lafont's rating isn't too good in the way of, it is still good, and it's good for a backup keeper, but I don't have to worry about it, as you saw, uh, when we did the contract, I gave him a little bit of extra wage. Just so I didn't have to tell him what position, he, what uh, role he was going to have at the club. Therefore, things were much easier for me, um, which means I don't have to play him as much. And of course, when Relnuth is doing bad like he is right now, I can bring on, um, you know, uh, Lafont. And then when Lafont, uh, I think, has done his course and Relnuth is ready to come back in the team, I can play Relnuth. All good, all done, and yeah, like I said, we're going to be playing LaFont, and it's a little bit of a weaker team for this one, uh, for the, no, it's not this, sorry, sorry, it's not this game, it's the next game where the team's a little bit more weaker, my apologies there, it's uh, still a fairly strong team, to be fair, for this one, heading out with pretty much uh, full, with uh, all guns are blazing, and, we did, and before this game, I went into the team tactics, and I adjusted how we're going to play the game, you see a long ball being played in there, to Villalba, who just has, who just has to pass it off to Locadia, and it's 1-0. But yeah, that was how the uh, 
the, the team tactics are. We launch the long balls forward now, so there's not that many men who have to go forward. That means we can have a better defensing press. I've made sure to stop a lot of the midfielders. I believe only the central midfielder goes forward now in the attack while the other two stay back. And the cams and the strikers make sure to never go back while attacking. So everything is looking much better. And, of course, now we just launch long balls forward. And that's our plan of attack for the rest of the season, I assume. But here's Bergwin, who had an absolutely phenomenal game here. Really did. Outclassed Osborne, in my opinion. And you want to talk about uh, people who haven't phenomenal games as well. Jurgen Locadia back at it. But, Ver but uh, Valdez was just not letting anything go in after conceding that first goal. You see him there making another incredible save. The fake shot gets past the defender with ease. But Valdez knew what, just knew how to time it. And there's an absolutely incredible job there. And lo and behold, it's still 1-0. And then, well, there's Middlesbrough having their own goal with a launching a long ball forward. Lafont maybe call it the question here. Maybe not, but it falls to Fisher. It gets a shot, and yes, Lafont called in the question for the first time. And he makes a strong save out of it. You're going to see it there. There's the shot by Fisher. Good shot, and just gets down at the right time. Good save by Lafont, and I was very impressed by it. Didn't get called into action much into this game, so I didn't have much to review it with. But I can say that, of course, as you see there, the game ends 1-0. And we pull out the win. We deserve the win. We played like the better team. And I was just, I was impressed all around with the team performance. The formation is finally working. You know, that confusing thing. And yeah, the players are starting to gel together. And I'm really, uh, I'm really happy with how it's going. So here we go. This is the team where I played a, a weaker team. A weaker lineup for the sole purpose of what you're going to see coming out of this game. Uh, is the reason why we went for it. I don't know why I'm alluding to it. I've probably put it as the title known my look for some sort of clickbait. Yeah, we're, we're playing Barcelona after this, so I had to put out a, uh, a weaker team to avoid some sort of problems when taking on Barcelona. Smart tactic in my mind. We draw right to the deadline there with uh, Ben Osborne scoring. Thank God. It was a very cautious moment there, and I thought we were done. But it was not the case. And then we went to... El Liberator, the, the, the new camp is how I'm still going to call it. We go to the new camp to play Barcelona. This, and I'm not even going to lie, this was fearful. After watching the Barca PSG game, which if you haven't watched, by the way, you need to go and see. That was one of the greatest games of all time. You probably have seen it. I think nearly every football fan has seen it. What a game it was. But yeah, I had chills heading into this game. I was that fearful about it. But I thought somehow that the performance Barca had against PSG was going to reflect onto this game. I was absolutely shitting it. And I saw their lineup and I really started to shit it a little bit more. You can see here it's a 4-3-3. The usual 4-3-3. But with the likes of Schneiderlin, Busquets and Gomez in, in the midfield. I think it's Gomez is how you pronounce it. I was, I was just like, why did I play three at the back? I don't know. That's obviously not the formation we're playing. But you know, I was just sitting there thinking, why did I, why did I think this would be a good idea? I don't know. The atmosphere was petrifying. There was more away fans than I expected, though. But um, I went with the captain for Lansbury's this game, as you can see him there, getting a really nice free kick off the stud. Went for it because I thought, you know, thinking about it in an actual realistic standpoint, if you were to go to the new camp, you want someone the fans and the players can rely on and have known for some time, and that would be Henry Lansbury. But it seemed as if Jurgen Locadia was going to be our saving grace as he wins us a penalty there. Umtiti brings him down in the box. You can't even argue against. Look at this. He basically just kicks him in the ankle, trying to clear the ball. Locadia goes down. And it'll be Henry Lansbury to step up to the spot with the Forest faithful behind, in front of him, I should say. The fans who've travelled out to Barcelona to watch this. Will it be 1-0? Can he beat to Steigen? No, he can't. He hits the bar. It was absolute, uh, just that moment, really not a proud moment, just to hit the bar. Oh, so annoying what could have been one of our best chances of the game. But then it keeps on going. A high defensive line is able to be exploited by Locadia, but it goes over the bar. Not too sure what Locadia was thinking there when he struck that one. But for whatever reason, it just did not go well. And you see it just sky and go nowhere near the net. Really disappointing. But we move on to the second half here. It's Rooney and it's over the bar. Rooney, of course, used to these high-pressure situations, so he was doing great in the game. We sub on Ben Osmond towards the end. They went all out trying to get an attack going, and they left it open for Jurgen Locadia to make it 1-0. Deep in the stoppage time in one of the last kicks of the game. It may only be a group stage game, but for God's sake, we just beat Barcelona at the new Camp. We have beaten 
the giants of football 1-0. I don't care about the result, I don't care about the goal. We beat them, and not only did we beat them at home as well, we were the better team in the statistics. What a moment it was to beat them. Honestly, just could not put it into words. The table right now is irrelevant. We just beat Barcelona. This league is ours. We're winning everything. You're here to year first. That is going to end this episode of Korean Mode. Thank you guys for watching. Take care, guys. And ta -ra.